This is section 10.2, plane curves and parametric equations. So this chapter is going to be a little bit different um, than what we've seen from the chapters before. So the definition of a plane curve is if f and g are continuous functions of t on an interval i, then the equations x equal to f of t and y equal to g of t are parametric equations and t is the parameter. The set of points x, y obtained as t varies over the interval is the graph of the parametric equations. Taken together, the parametric equations and the graph are a plane curve denoted by c. So essentially, they usually use t for time. So then what happens is, is over time, you're plotting all these points and then eventually creates a graph. But if you start at time zero and continue all the way to however many seconds, um, you'll start to see that it's moving around, okay? And so to indicate what's called the orientation, you use arrows to show which way the curve is moving. Because as time goes, I may be going to the right or I start here and as time passes, I'm going to the left. You have to show arrows to indicate that that movement, okay? So this says, sketch the curve represented by the parametric equations, indicate the orientation of the curve, and write the corresponding rectangular equation by eliminating the parameter, okay? Now they didn't give us any, um, any bounds on our parameter, so we can assume that t is um, between negative infinity and infinity. So we only need to use a couple of t values to figure out what's going on, um, and then that'll help us to graph and generalize the graph with more arrows, okay? So let's start off with maybe t equal to negative one, then t equal to zero, t equal to positive one, t equal to two, and depending on what our graph looks like at that point, we may need more, but let's go ahead and see what our, our function's gonna look like here. So for x, we're gonna get two times negative one minus three, which is negative five. For y, we're gonna get three times negative one plus one, which is negative two. So we get the point negative five comma negative two. For t equal to zero, we get x equal to negative three and y equal to one. Hence this point. When we t equals one, we get negative one and four, which is this point. And then when we plug in two, we get one and we get seven, which is, oops, this point here. So if we plot these on a graph, here we go. You start off with the first one that you that you did. So remember, your interval is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So if I'm looking at these values in order on a number line, this value comes first. So I have to plot that point first. So it's here. Then t equal to zero leads me with negative three and one. And then negative one and 4 and then 1 and 7 so here so it's a straight line okay and the straight line would continue this way um, well I shouldn't put the arrow there until I know the orientation now since we started with this point it moved in this direction to get to the next point which moved in this direction to get to that point and moved in this direction to get to that point. So it can be assumed that it's gonna continue in that direction. Now here, you can't put an arrow like that because that means it's going in that direction. But since everything is oriented this way, we're gonna put our tail end, an arrow going in that direction, okay? So we've done the first part as we've graphed it. The second part says write the corresponding rectangular equation by eliminating the parameter. Okay, so what we do there is we take both of the equations, we solve for t, and then we set both of those equations equal to each other. So here if I solve for t, 
I get that t equals x plus 3 over 2. And if I solve for t on this side, I get that t equals y minus 1 over 3. So since both of these are equivalent to t, they should be equivalent to each other. And if I multiply both sides by the common denominator, these are going to reduce. So I'm going to get 3 times x plus 3 equal to 2 times y minus 1, which will give me 3x plus 9 equal to 2y minus 2. And normally when we're given linear equations, we like to have it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to go ahead and um, first I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And then I'm going to switch the sides of the equation. So 2y is going to go on this side, and the 2s are gone here. And then 3x plus 11 is now on the right-hand side. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I get 3 halves x plus 11 halves. This is the equation without the parameters. So 11 halves would be like 5 and a half. And if I go here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, and it may be off of my alignment here because I'm not on graph paper. But this should be like at 5 and a half. And then the 3 halves should, if I moved from 5 and a half up 3 units um, and then over 2 units. So 1, 2, 3, and then over um, 1, 2, which would put me about on the line again, another point on the line. And if you keep repeating that slope, you'll get to more points on the line. So again, it's a little bit off because I'm not using um, graphing paper. I'm just marking lines on my regular notebook paper. But this is the equation for this um, parametric equation. So I'm going to go ahead and um, in this video here, and then we'll continue with some more problems on the next page.